There's one supplement almost all adults should take because of the robust human studies proving both safety and benefits. The evidence is so strong that the International Society of Sports Nutrition concluded that this supplement is the most effective in terms of increasing exercise capacity and lean body mass. Plus, we've got fantastic research showing that it reduces muscle damage and enhances recovery from exercise, which is crucial because we know that higher muscle strength results in lower all-cause death rates. The aim is to maximize muscle strength in youth, maintain muscle in middle age, and minimize the loss in older age. I am, of course, talking about creatine, and we need to have a deeper look at the human studies, discuss safety and the small percentage of adults that shouldn't take creatine, then the dose and the brand that I personally use. So how does creatine work? Well, it's primarily stored in our muscles in the form of phosphocreatine, and phosphocreatine is the initial energy source for all exercise. The theory goes that if we increase phosphocreatine stores in our muscles, we improve muscle performance. So what do the human clinical studies show? Compared to placebo, we see significant improvements in strength and power. A 2015 meta-analysis that combined all of the relevant clinical studies together concluded that creatine supplementation is effective in improving lower limb strength performance. But it's important to note that we seem to get most of our benefits from creatine during short bouts of exercise. For endurance sports such as running or swimming, there doesn't seem to be much extra value, aside from improving muscle recovery. Now one of the other benefits that came to light last year in a massive meta-analysis was cognitive performance. It seems that creatine supplements, they improve memory. Before we go through that study, a massive thank you to the now 300 patrons supporting the channel and those numbers are growing rapidly. All members get early access to these videos and if you do want to sign up, there's a link in the pinned comment. The study concluded that creatine supplementation enhanced measures of memory performance in healthy individuals, especially older adults. The theory goes that just like muscle performance, if we can increase the amount of creatine in the brain, we can improve memory. Because memory is very energetically demanding. And considering that creatine is a key regulator of energy status, if we can increase creatine in the brain, it may enhance memory. There's some nuance in the data here and we need to go through it step by step before making any claims. While most studies do show that creatine supplements increase the amount of creatine in the brain, some studies have shown no effect. The brain does have the ability to produce its own creatine, so it appears to be more resistant to the uptake of creatine from supplements. And it could be that the brain can produce enough creatine during normal circumstances, but under times of stress, such as sleep deprivation or aging, that's where creatine supplements can plug the gap. And overall, from the research that we have so far, it's likely that creatine supplements do increase the amount of creatine in the brain. With that out the way, what does the meta-analysis show about creatine supplements and memory performance? It combined 10 separate, randomized controlled studies. The main analysis showed that memory performance following creatine supplements improved compared to placebo. However, within the studies that were included, there was a moderate degree of disagreement, which is also known as heterogeneity, which is less than ideal because in a perfect world, we'd want all studies to be pointing in the right direction. One of the reasons for the conflicting results from the individual studies is that the risk of bias was scored as high in 6 out of the 10 randomized controlled trials. Overall, when we combine the 10 separate studies together, they do seem to indicate that we can see memory performance improvements with creatine supplements, but it's not a done deal like the benefits we see in muscle performance. And I agree with the conclusion of that meta-analysis, which states that we need a larger, longer-term randomized trial to confirm if there are true benefits for memory performance. Before taking any supplement, we have to make sure it's safe. And trials lasting up to five years have consistently shown that creatine supplementation poses no adverse health risks. In particular, there's no association between creatine supplements and kidney dysfunction. In saying that though, for patients that I see in the clinic with severe kidney impairment, I would not recommend creatine supplements. Outside of that very small proportion of people, however, creatine supplements are safe. The next common claim on social media is that creatine supplements cause hair loss. It does not. The initial concerns came from a 2009 study where it appeared that DHT hormone levels increased and high levels of DHT are a contributing factor to hair loss. But here's the crucial point, no study has ever shown an association with creatine supplements and hair loss. And when we have a deeper look at that 2009 study, there was a small increase in DHT hormone levels in the creatine group plus a small decrease in the placebo group and that difference resulted in a statistically significant result. As expected when statistical trickery is done, those 
results have never been replicated. Since then, we've had five separate studies showing that there's no change in DHT levels. In summary, from a large meta-analysis, there's no evidence that creatine supplements increases DHT or causes hair loss. I want to put that concern to rest. There is no evidence that creatine contributes to hair loss. Instead, what's likely happening is that when people start taking creatine, they also start going to the gym, and we know that testosterone levels increase following heavy resistance exercise. So it's far more likely that creatine supplements are being blamed for hair loss when actually it's the resistance exercise. The next concern is uric acid and gout. However, the available research shows that creatine supplements reduce uric acid. There are two more concerns to go through, and the first one is cramping. A large meta-analysis shows that creatine supplements do not cause dehydration or muscle cramping. The only consistent side effect from creatine supplements is weight gain, but this is a good thing. With creatine supplements, we're improving our lean muscle mass. We're adding muscle, which is the whole point here. With those safety concerns out the way, now we need to talk about the types of creatine. The most common type is creatine monohydrate, but many other supplement companies will try and convince you to buy more expensive versions. However, they've not been proven to be any better than creatine monohydrate. My advice is to save your money and stick with the cheap, creatine monohydrate. What about dose? Because there's a couple of different options here. You can try and load your body with creatine to bring your muscle stores up as quickly as possible, and you do this by taking about 20 grams of creatine a day for about 5 to 7 days. Or you can stick with the regular dose of 5 grams a day and slowly build up your creatine stores. This is the strategy that I generally advise because there's less side effects in terms of gastro discomfort. Overall, just keep things simple at 5 grams a day, and this includes days that you don't exercise. When it comes to selecting a good brand, we want to choose a brand that's pure and reasonably priced, so you can use websites such as labdoor.com to find a great brand. I've personally used Optimum Nutrition in the past, and currently I'm using creatine from donotage.org. This is because of the purity testing and the great price, and there's an affiliate discount code of 10% in the pinned comment. Finally, creatine supplements do not break a fast, and make sure to check out this next video here, why I recommend against intermittent fasting. A massive thank you to donotage.org for their $10,000 donation to my rapamycin study. They are a health research organization, and to benefit from their ingredients as well as a 10% discount code, check out the pinned comment.